Welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending September 11th, 2022. Um, and let's start uh, with some news about Japan and Japan's Moon Viewing Festival, which has arrived this weekend. And unsurprisingly, a Sailor Moon inspired collaboration has been announced <laughs> to celebrate. Well, um, but not with the typical cute merchandise you might expect. Japanese fast food chain Moss Burger is releasing, you guessed it, a limited time Sailor Moon themed Moon Burger. Hmm. Um, which, you know, that's a thing. Um, it features Tsukumi hot spring eggs and a crescent shaped sausage in reference to. In representing the crescent moon. So there's sausages on my sailor moon. Yes, burger? they are. Yes, yes. Huh. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. It looks like something I would be killing in Genshin. <laughs> it looks like a zaku to me. I'm um, not gonna lie. I would eat the hell out of that. Yeah, but, yeah it's, it looks delicious. Yeah. But other other than that, I, the, the, the sausage is a little weird. <laughs> like <laughs> the combination is called. Moonlight Romance. <laughs> wow. Which is the name of the which is the opening theme to Sailor Moon. Um, because what more romantic meal could there be to enjoy beneath the moon with your loved one than this? Than sausages um, and eggs. What, sausages what does that eggs. represent? It's a fertility sandwich. Hey! Oh. Hey, here we go. Um, wow. Bossberger released a short ad for the sandwich featuring narration from Kotono Mitsuishi, the voice actor of Abusagi, including a play on her iconic catchphrase, I kid you not. She actually says this in the name of the moon viewing. It's delicious. Oh, <laughs> the dump truck full of money strikes again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> By Grabthar's hammer. <laughs> oh, God. Um, oh, now, oh my. we're not done yet. Um, of course not. <laughs> now, anime clothing collaborations are nothing new, but some are definitely weirder than others. Um, Hips Hop has teamed up with Gegege no Kitaro, a oh. line of themed boxer shorts. What? Featuring images of six main characters from the 1985 Kitaro anime. Oh, wow. Including, Whoa. yep, um, including Madama Oyaji, because who wouldn't want a giant naked eyeball on their backside? Um, if you're looking to support your favorite yokai on your skivvies, these shorts are on pre-order now for 2,500 yen a pair. Uh, I'm and conflicted. I'm gonna probably <laughs> this probably would be a good point to make is that check your sizing nope. because sizing is for Japan, Japan. <laughs> like right. not for a lot of the more Rubenesque people that uh, <laughs> occupy a lot of the rest of the world. I so want a pair of these. <laughs> I know. I, Damn it. I, I, want um, an, I want an eyeball on my backside. <laughs> I'm thinking I want a Kabe Kabe. I love Wally Wally. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. great. Why not? Why not? Um, oh, dear. Now, now wow. we're still not done with the weird news. Um, <laughs> it gets weirder still. It, oh. it gets weirder still. Oh, um, so. A new manga-inspired stage musical has been announced. This <laughs> mm -hmm. And what lends itself better to spontaneous song and dance numbers than, you guessed it, Attack on Titan. That's right. <laughs> Attack on Titan the musical. <laughs> I've come to eat your village, eat your village, eat your village. <laughs> Uh, it'll By the soft January. moonlight, your mother is delicious. <laughs> Just... <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. All right. Here um, we go. It'll premiere in January of next year, <laughs> featuring music direction from hip hop artist Ken the 390, and oh aims to combine God. traditional staging and music with the latest technology to recreate the terrifying <laughs> world of Attack on Titan. Because that's what you want in your stage musicals: <laughs> is <laughs> raw terror. <laughs> Oh, we can't like gushing blood on the first. Of the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to leave the audience with a slight bit of tra trauma and a toe tapping <laughs> tune or two. Ah, oh, that's very good. So, tell us what you thought of Attack on Titan. 
horrifying, right. yet I can't get yes. the tunes out of my exactly. head. <laughs> but um, yes. Oh yeah. no. We actually, and we have a, a visual. I mean, it's, it's just you know. Yeah. People. I don't see any um, tap dancing on that. Visual, <laughs> but that's fine. Oh my god, the rigging on this! They're, they're going to be like, yeah, yeah like people just. <laughs> Oh. You just imagine rehearsals. Oh, no, no, look at they're gonna collide. Oh, damn it! If I get understudy to see a tap dancing Titan, that's all I need. What's that? Oh. If I get to see a tap dancing Titan, that's all I need. Oh, like, like, I, I need three seconds of that clip, and I'm good. Nobody oh. needs that because they're all naked. Oh. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. It's gonna be an 18 plus show. <laughs> <laughs> naked Titans, then uh, to, to to sort of. Give the idea without too much rigging about them flying around. It's all going to be on roller skates. Ah, there we go. Wow, <laughs> Starlight Express be back yes. on Titan. Here we go. Yeah, there's where you want to be inspired by. <laughs> yeah. Oh <laughs> boy. Oh, um, but Chinko would be so much easier. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, people. Come on. Um. All right. Let's move on to some anime announcements. Ooh. Um. Some interesting anime announcements this week. Starting off with this one, holy smokes, everyone. This week brings us a pretty significant anime announcement. A website opened on Wednesday to announce The Rose of Versailles is getting a new anime film. Yeah, I saw that. Wow. Ooh. It's first animated work since 1990. Yeah. And 50 years after the manga's initial serialization. Um, the story is set in the court of Marie Antoinette, run the time of the French Revolution, <coughs> which is before the French Revolution, particularly, and really inspired in 1989 anime series and 1990 anime film, uh, plus a live action film, and many, many recurring Takara Zuka stage musical performances. Um, it continued significantly to the development of, uh, development of shoujo manga as a genre, and was the first shoujo manga to receive mainstream success, um, contributing to the genre shift from works aimed at children to those aimed more at adolescents and young adults. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And like this, yeah. This image that don't look like 1979. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I can't wait to see what Rose of Versailles looks like as a modern anime. Wow. Yeah. It's not gonna be any uh, kind of Utna kind of vibe going on. We'll, we'll see what happens. That's the interesting question. Like, how like that anime series was very stylized. Yes, yes. You know, are they going to go that route, or are they going to go more kind of restrained modern style? I don't know. It's going to be like Final Fantasy 15. It's going to be yeah. all the CGI kind of thing going. On. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Sounds good to me. We'll um, find out. We will we'll, find out. We'll definitely find out. The cover of the ninth volume of the Free Ren Beyond Journeys and the manga was revealed this week, and states the manga is getting an anime. Hmm. Um, the story follows an elf mage named Freeran, who just decades after her party defeats the demon king and brings peace <laughs> to the land embarks on a new journey to fulfill the last wishes of her former comrades and confront her own immortality. Um, from what I've read, this is a little more kind of slice of life journey kind of a story right. um, than a lot of other things. So I'm intrigued. You can get the manga. Um, I, I have it downloaded. I'll, I'll hopefully read it soon. Um, Piroya's The Family Circumstances of the Imbalanced Witch is um, um, also getting an anime adaptation. Um, it's a comedy. It focuses on the unusual parent and child relationship of a witch who lives alone in the forest and a human girl she found as a baby and raised who is now a grown and responsible teenager while the witch is acts more like a irresponsible child. So wackiness ensues, you know, as the, the responsible daughter kind of takes care of her irresponsible mother kind of a thing. Hmm. Okay. Sounds cute. Um... The Cafe Terrace of the Goddesses, a hair romantic comedy manga, um, is inspired by a TV anime. The creator also created Fuka in a Town Where You Live. Oh. Um, set to air next year, a college student returns to a childhood home and family cafe after his grandmother's passing, only to discover that the five girls working at the cafe all claim to be part of his grandfather's family. Oh. Okay. So you better handhold and kiss a whole lot of uh, them to find uh, out who's exactly. going to be the true heir. Okay. Right. Gotcha. Totally. Um, maybe um, um, please, uh, uh, please, twins. Maybe a little bit of, of a one guy twins. Right? Okay, yeah, yeah. exactly. Kiss yeah. by sis, maybe. Uh, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as soon as you said um, harem, I'm gonna end up watching it anyway. So that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Um, Katakawa's announced an anime adaptation based on the "You were experienced, I wasn't, and this is how we started dating" 
light novel series. Hmm. Um, it follows a pair of completely opposite high schoolers who began growing up because of a game, but discovered that even their differences can be something to bond over. I read a bit more on this, but apparently, basically, and I may be misunderstanding this, but um, um, loner guy um, um, either like loses a bet and has to like introduce himself to her, or like he's playing a game and he see like a video game and he sees that like another player is high <clears throat> and so he goes to like you know connect up or you know share resources or whatever and if i just it's like the most popular girl in school right okay. going, out, going cute you know um um <clears throat> dress up darling yep okay. i was gonna say marin chan okay. yep right um but um apparently like they they start hanging out together and like you just enjoy each other's company um just having very different views on things so like Marin John. Yeah, even like Marin John. But apparently this is this is less about like their bonding over like appreciating their their the similarities of their interests and, and more about we like completely different things and find that interesting. Hmm. Like huh. I, I'm intrigued by your hobbies, you're you're intrigued by my hobbies, apparently. So interesting. Okay. Um it wouldn't be a news week without a new Isekai anime. Uh <laughs> And this week's entry is am I actually the strongest? Um, inspiring a TV anime sometime next year. The unfortunate protagonist gets the privilege of being reincarnated into another world, but is promptly reborn, reborn as a baby and abandoned by his parents, <laughs> um, who are royalty. Uh, he must learn to navigate this dangerous new world, but fortunately he's got off the charts magic, of course. Of course he does. Okay, now, if you stop it at the point where he's like, one years old and like a ridiculously powerful mage and he can think like an adult but can't communicate mm. other than like nah, 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 nah. I'd watch that. That'd be funny yeah. as hell. <laughs> but if we're gonna have the whole growing up thing like was it Mushioko Tensei? Right. Um, yeah. Like, okay, we've 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 done that. Mm. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> it's just a guy. We've we've done we've that. done that. But yes, a one year old like babbling baby who like has yeah. ridiculously superhuman powers <laughs> that would be damn funny. I'd watch that. I'd yeah. watch that. Um, the Tear Moon Empire light novel series is also getting a 2023 TV anime. The selfish princess Mia of a fallen empire is killed by her people mm. but suddenly wakes back up as a 12 year old. To be clear, she does not isekai. She jumps back in time to herself when she was 12. Mm. And sets out to rewrite history and fix the empire so she can avoid the guillotine a second time. So a little bit of uh, villainous. I like yep. villainous. That's um, what it sounds like. But yeah. it sounds uh, like a little bit more like, you know, I know exactly where this is going and need to kind of rework things as opposed to like I'm in this scenario. Right. I need to replant the flags <laughs> like yeah. here, there, here, <laughs> and there. So let's not lead to death. Huh. Um. And the Ancient Magister's Bride is getting a second season. Yeah, I saw that. I was just like, holy cow. Um, what's interesting is kind of the backstory here. So first season was by Studio Wit. Um, and it was pulled away from Studio Wit. Hmm. Um, and um, a new studio called Studio Kafka was established precisely to take over production of Ancient Magister's Bride and create the OADs, Damn. which they've been doing. And then they're going to go ahead and do something. <clears throat> I don't know, man. Um, Studio they... Wit did an amazing yeah. job with the series. Yeah. How how they could have gotten that taken away, and how can you plus that for mm. some other studio? God. Well, you do it with Good visuals like this. Um, yeah. You know, they, they reveal this this key visual for the new season, and I'm like. That's how you get people interested in a new season of Ancient Magic's Bride. Yeah, just oh, what studio mm. did it so good? Yeah, oh, man. It, legendary, legendary. Yeah. Work on that. So I mean, we've talked yeah. we've talked about the bits and pieces of it where it's like just the detail, the loving detail of everything in that show. Yeah, nothing is spared for bookshelves worth of worth of mm. books, but for just the littlest flowers around the 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 uh, house. Yeah. It's just stunning in its detail. So, mm -hmm. okay. Well, we'll see how this is going to go. Yeah. Yeah. We will see. Um, moving on to some uh, more normal anime news. Um, the forest areas in Takarazawa, Saitama, were the inspiration for Studio Ghibli's Blood of Mind Totoro, 
But threats to the forest from land development have sparked a conservation effort that Hayao Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli themselves are getting in on. <laughs> the Green Space Conservation Project, being run by Tokorozawa City, aims to conserve two different forest areas of around two hectares each, but will cost an estimated 2.6 billion yen. Mm. <laughs> the city has allocated 1% of its municipal tax revenue towards the purchase of the land, about 1.8 billion, and Hayao Miyazaki has donated 300 million yen of his own money towards the cause. And that's like two, three million dollars. Um, but there still leaves a gap. So a crowdfunding campaign was launched, which aimed to raise a total of 25 million yen by September 30th, and has, unsurprisingly, already surpassed its goal. Contributions toward the campaign were shifted in a set 25,000 yen, 250 bucks, or sorry, 180 US bucks right now, from 1,000 supporters. And in return, um, those supporters will receive five reproductions of background art used in My Neighbor Totoro and a frame. Baby. Not bad. Um, you get the camphor tree in uh, two different angles and various other images from there in gorgeous, gorgeous detail. Damn. Not bad. And it's already exceeded. It's, yeah. No. Yeah, it's already exceeded. Right, so yeah. We're, we're all good to go. Hey. Yeah. Two good hectares day. seems kind of small, though. Oh, it's it is small, and they 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 showed and it's like a strip of trees. It's like a strip here, strip here. That's all they got. That's all they're gonna get. I was gonna say because I would have figured like fifty or a hundred hectares would have been mm. probably like forest. You know, I mean, yeah. like that's right. a big thing versus mm. two. Yeah, no. but with land value being what it is and putting mm. it into it, you know functional use, I, I get that. Yep. I get that. Um, let me actually see if I can show. We will see if this works. We're going to try something real quick, everyone. Oh, yeah, that works. Oh, okay, yeah. So, like, it's not nothing, but it's, it's not huge. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's... Wow. Mm -hmm. um, Dang. Uh, this is a 3.5 hectares of land. Um, so, oh, okay, okay, so there's, there's a total of 3.5 hectares of land in the whole uh, project. But it sounds like this chunk, this crowdfunding is for this particular chunk of that larger project. Right. Gotcha. So, not huge. <laughs> Makes you wonder whether you, could you raise a significant amount of crowdfunding to be able to, like, buy the adjacent parcels and connect it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's, yeah. you never yeah. know. You never know. Um, let's see here. Um, One Piece seems to be going stronger than ever these days. One Piece. Are, say what? One piecing, one piecing, exactly. One piecing. Yeah, um, it's no Mugen Train, but yeah. Uh, well, um, one part of that is the August release of his latest film, One Piece Film Red. As of this week, the movie has surpassed Top Gun Maverick to become the year's highest earning film in Japan so far, and the ninth highest earning anime film in Japan of all time. Hmm. The film centers on a new idol character, of course. So naturally, its songs are dominating over on the music charts. Um, singer Otto, sing the singing voice of the film's Uta, has ranked number one for four consecutive weeks across all three Oricon digital ranking charts, becoming the first artist to achieve the feat since the chart started in 2016, 2017, and 2018, respectively. Damn. Hmm. The top four places on this week's streaming rankings were also all her songs. Hmm. My Good. best. Gracious, the yeah. the way that anime and the the sort of blending of the media with singing, etc. Yeah. Oh goodness gracious! The movie has sold nine million two hundred ninety eight thousand tickets. <laughs> Damn! Having made ninety two point seventeen million. One for dollars. each volume. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Dang. No, I love hearing these these numbers because yeah. 20, 20 years ago, if you had said, "Oh no, this is going to be this like wildly grossing film," be like, <laughs> "No, you're insane!" <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, oh, yeah. One Piece film? No, no. Be the Luffy, no. The, the guy with the the, the yeah, wacky yeah, arms. That will nah. never happen. Not going to be in the comments never. before I go to like calculus. <laughs> <laughs> That'll never happen. Yeah, 20 years um, ago. Sorry, I was being generous. 30. <laughs> 30 <laughs> yeah. 
Well, Gundam fans in the UK, US, Canada, and Australia will soon have another reason to visit theaters. Crunchyroll has acquired the rights to the new Mobile Suit Gundam Kukuru Zone's Island anime film and will screen it in theaters later this month. Wow. Both subbed and English dubbed version will screen in the UK on the 21st and 22nd. In the US, September 27th and 28th. Canada, Australia, starting September 29th. Huh. This is the retelling of the 15th episode of the original Gundam series. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, exactly. the, that's the missing one, right? Yep, that's the missing episode. Right. So cool. We'll get it in theaters over here. That's tempting. Very tempting. IMAX. Yes, absolutely. Um, we have games based on anime and anime based on games, but this week the Cyberpunk 2077 franchise is connecting the two. An update to the original game, the video game, has added a quest line, weapon, and cosmetics from Studio Trigger's upcoming Cyberpunk Edge Runners anime series. Nice. And okay. a couple of the anime will be played in game as part of the quest. Um, oh. You should check out the art. I actually was checking out yeah. the art last night. It's pretty nice. The anime will premiere on September 13th with a story that is separate from the game, but still linked in some way. Apparently. Yeah, so. the guy I work with was telling me Friday about that. He's mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, you know, this is great. The Cyberpunk uh, uh, 2077 mm -hmm. anime. Oh, I'm looking so forward to it. I'm like, there's a what and a who now? Yeah. <laughs> I missed that announcement. And so. maybe you can actually play the game now. Maybe it's actually like... Yeah, uh, maybe it's functionally playable. Nice. Yay. Uh, Apparently, they've been patching the hell out of it yeah. for like since its release. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <It's amazing. laughs> I mean, some of the art that comes from 2077 is just uh, amazing. Yeah, and um, and what what I saw of the Edge Runner actually does make me want to watch it. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, here's a, a story I did not think I would I would say. The uh -oh. Princess Tutu anime will hold its 20th anniversary event in Tokyo on September 25th. Oh, ow. Ow. Wow! The main twenty years, twenty years. It's it was yesterday. Ow! Years. Ow! With Ow. the main Ow. staff and voice actors reading letters from fans and discussing the memories of the series, the event will have a daytime and an evening session, which will be live streamed. Um, Damn! That yes. hurts. But but twentieth anniversary um, uh, event. That's cool. Oh, yeah. it's cool. It's very cool. Like, but it just doesn't feel like twenty. Yeah, no, years. it does not feel like twenty years. <laughs> You know, it, I feel like it's I was just of, watching the AMVs of that yesterday. Oh, no. it's like, oh. is a princess tutu? Will you will you get a two love rue uh, 20th anniversary? Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> right, princess tutu, yeah. yes, but mm -hmm. probably there's a lot of others that are not. Could they get this treatment? Could they do more anime for princess tutu? I wonder. I'm sure, they could. But how? Like this, that that story is done. Oh yeah, because that 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 they they. Mm. Well, now you, you do the it. dream. Of like one of the characters that's set on a night where you're not in the anime, yeah, and in it. that dream, there's this whole other world. Yeah, no, you, it. you got it. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, nailed it. <laughs> Coma fantasy. I mean, <laughs> Isekai. Isekai. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Princess Tutu as a warrior in a futuristic space Isekai. <laughs> oh, God, really? <laughs> I'd watch it, but yeah, <laughs> I'd, I'd want to know, but still. <laughs> Last up, a warning to any of you who have used the streaming service Wakanim. The release of new content has been delayed as it works through an issue which may or may not be related to a possible sale of data leaked from its 6.7 uh, million users. Oh, no, that's not good. <laughs> no. Personal data, IP addresses, and account info from the service was listed for sale on a data leak marketplace at the end of August. Oof. And it's since been marked as sold. Oh. Oh. Crunchyroll, who now hosts Wakanim's content library as part of the big merger from earlier this year, stated it's aware of the alleged data incident and is investigating the issue. Uh, investigation is ongoing. Oh. So, again, to be clear, Crunchyroll sort of acquired. This is not Crunchyroll data. Right, right. right. This is what they inherited. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh. Time to change your passwords again. Yeah, no joke. Oh, so Damn. that that's bad. Kind of interesting that the hackers are going after that. Yeah. Well, you you take off the low hanging fruit as best you can. Mm -hmm. You know, that could result at least in some credit card numbers, maybe that you know you could skim some from. 
before they shut you down. Yep. Um, uh, in, August, in August 28th, posts in the data leak marketplace breach forums offered to sell a uh, data leak from 6.7 million users, including each user's <gasps> account name, universally unique identifier, IP address, email address, state, city, zip code, country, phone number, first name, last name, and account type. Each. Uh, which means there's going to be a crap ton of junk mail coming to a whole bunch of people <laughs> real soon. <laughs> Hope y'all like car warranties. Just saying. Uh, yeah. Um, that's all the news for this week. Thanks for watching. See you next week.